Hello, class of 2021. Congratulations on being about halfway through your senior year of high school. I have a senior in my household and I cannot believe how quickly the year is going. I know that it's not quite been what you thought maybe your senior year would be, uh, but I hope that you're making the best of it and trying to enjoy all the little moments that um, go with being a senior. My name is Deb Ebert and I am the Scholarship and Donor Services Coordinator here at the Finley Hancock County Community Foundation. And here at the foundation, we hold about 140 scholarships, um, thanks to some very generous donors um, in Finley and the entire Hancock County area. And last year in 2020, we awarded around $370,000 in scholarships. Um, and so what I wanna do today is walk you through our scholarship application process so that you can take some time to apply and um, try to earn some of that scholarship money. We've had students um, just this past year who we had a couple students who earned anywhere from five to six different scholarships. One of those being one scholarship was worth $10,000 just in itself. So you've got some great opportunities. There's a lot of competition out there this year in Hancock County for scholarship money, um, but there's so many opportunities here and I just wanna walk you through that. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to share my screen with you so that we can get started on this process. So what you're gonna do first is you would come to our website, www.community hyphenfoundation.com and you're going to get to this homepage. Across the top you will see these links and you'll see scholarships. So click on scholarships and it's going to take you to this next page. Right here this link is all of the 2021 scholarships that we hold here at the foundation. It breaks them down as to whether it's Finley High School, whether it's a um, Van Buren High School scholarship or um, Liberty Benton or Macomb, um, so that you can kind of see what those scholarships are. If you attend Millstream, there are Millstream scholarships available. And it also breaks down as to what the criteria is in terms of maybe there's a GPA requirement or a certain major, maybe a certain university you're attending, but all of that information can be found right at that link. When you're ready to apply, you're going to come over here to the side to application types click on application types and it takes you to the next page. This tells you a little bit about our common application, the universal application. Um, it did open up on December 2nd. It closes Wednesday, February 3rd at 12 noon. So if you have not gotten started on this or you started and haven't quite finished, you need to make sure that you're getting on top of that because that February 3rd is quickly approaching. So when you're ready, you are gonna see this blue apply today button and you're gonna click on that and that will take you to the logon page. Sorry, that's for me. It will take you to the logon page um, where you're gonna create your own account. You will see this information along the side. There are other video and written tutorials about this uh, application. So if you need to go back to it to review or maybe your parents are a little unsure of how it's working, they can look at that as well. So I'm actually going to go to a different page because if I go to the same one that you are on, then it will not, mm, I've got way too many links open. It will uh, mess up the system if I go to the live site. So let me just start over here. Sorry about this. Okay, so same page, you are gonna create a new account. So you, all of this will be blank, it won't have my information. You're gonna click create, create new account and this comes to your account page to create. If it has an asterisk, it is required. So, I am going to say I'm Susie Scholar. Email and username. Now, a suggestion here from previous experience. It is time for you to get a grown up email address, one that's going to stay with you for maybe the rest of your life. Um, what I have found in the past is a lot of students use their high school email address 
when they are creating their account. And that's great for now. But if you receive a scholarship that is a renewal scholarship, then next year, when you're finishing up your freshman year of college, I'll be trying to reach out to you to get that scholarship renewed for you. And if I have your high school email address, you may not have access to that anymore. So it makes it a little difficult to, um, to find you and, re and locate you for further information. So it's time to get a grown up email address. I'm sure some of you already have done that uh, because of um, college applications. So that's just my little suggestion to you. So you'll have to confirm that email address that you put in there. Address. Let's say Finley. County is Hancock. Okay, so again, if it has an asterisk, it is required. So I'm gonna click next. Password, this is where you're gonna create your own password. I will not have access to your password. So you need to write this down somewhere because again, this is the same logon information that you can use for years to come if you are applying again or trying to renew. But I won't have access to that password. So please write it down so that you, have, you remember it for years to come. My keyboard has a mind of its own, it looks like. And you're going to click Create Account. You'll see another little pop-up. Click Continue. This just gives you the information again as to the due date and the website. Then you see this blue Apply button. Click on that, and that takes you right to the application. So we're going to get started. Um, if you are a child or a grandchild of an employee or a board member here, you are not eligible to apply for these scholarships. So my high school senior this year doesn't get to apply. He's not eligible for any of these scholarships. Um, so I am going to say no, I am not, so that we can continue with the application. If you click yes, it's not going to let you continue on. So uh, female, yes, you're going to see that a lot of the questions have these little radial buttons that you just click in that button. Um, to answer the questions. County, this is a drop down because all of these counties, we have scholarships for um, kiddos in these counties. So we're saying we're from Hancock County. So make sure you've got that. This is starting to be a little slow this afternoon. There we go. And you folks, student classification, you are graduating high school seniors. Woohoo, hallelujah, finally, huh? Um, next question, do you wish to be considered for need-based scholarships? This is a yes, no question, and depending on how you answer, um, it can impact your application. So need-based simply means some of our scholarships, it is required that you have some financial need. So um, if you would mark no, that you don't want to be considered for those scholarships, you need to recognize you're eliminating yourself from any from certain scholarships that that's a requirement for, okay? And it's fine if you mark no, just recognize that you, you might eliminate yourself from some of those. Um, if you mark yes, you're going to be led to another question in a little while related to that. So I am going to mark yes, so that you can see how that works later on. So yes, I do want to be considered for that. Now you're just gonna put parent information in here. Um, as you are typing things in, um, as you see, I, I kind of messed up there a little bit and I went back. Check that. Remember, this is a, an application uh, for scholarships for you to go to college to show that you have a great education. So do not type like you text. Make sure you've got capitals, you're using punctuation. Again, the um, selection committee see these, these applications. And so, you know, that might be something that they're looking at and saying, wow, they couldn't even take the time to make sure things were capitalized 
how um, serious are they about their their college their college um, application. So, um, just a little food for thought on that. I'm going to say my parent is the CEO of Cooper. Um, part of why we do this, have some parent guardian information, is if you are awarded a scholarship, then in August, we have a big flyer in the career that then lists your name, what college you're going to go to, um, what scholarship you received, and it also lists your parent or parents. And um, it's just a nice way for your parents to be recognized for helping you to get where you're at today. Um, so we'd like to have as much information as we can about them for that reason. Also, if there's a, a problem later in reaching out to you and having contact with you, um, this gives us that opportunity. It gives us the contact information for a parent for us to contact them in case we need to reach out to you. Now, the next one, um, Again, for the same reasons, you can add a second parent or guardian information or you cannot. It doesn't matter. You just have to mark yes or no. That is required. I'm going to say no right now it's just so we can move on. But if you mark yes, it's simply the same contact information that you just put for your first parent. Now, the question here, education financing, this is because you marked, I marked yes earlier in the need based. This is where you're going to upload your student aid report that you got from FAFSA. So um, if you marked no to that question, you will not have this part. But if you marked yes, then you're gonna see this and you're gonna need to upload that file. Most likely you or your parents have that um, saved as a download somewhere on somebody's laptop. So you're gonna upload it. Uh, And then you can see that right here. You see the little eyeball. You can check and see if it's there. Then the EFC score, that is also something that you find on your SAR. You're going to put that number in here as well. Then uh, your school of choice or what your first choice is. If you've selected a school and you know that's exactly where you're going, you list that, or you're going to just put your first choice here. I'm going to say University of Toledo. Um, this is going to be information you do need to get. So get that from either paperwork that you have from the university or the school website in terms of tuition and uh, room and board. Textbooks and supplies, this is an estimate because it's hard to determine what that's going to be right now. Are you financing your own education without help from parents or other individuals? Again, it's going to depend on how you answer this as to whether you've got another question. Um, no, I'm not, so I'm gonna answer some more. My parents are helping me finance. They're gonna pay about 75%. Now, this box here allows you to make any comments about your financial situation. It's not required. Some students like to share a little more information. Maybe there's been a family illness that has um, caused a lot of hospital bills. And so finances are pretty tight. Maybe there are three of you children that are gonna be in college at the same time. And that makes it tight for parents. Um, maybe COVID has had a big financial impact on your family. This would be the place to put that. It's not required, um, but um, you, you do have the opportunity if you so choose to. High school information, your high school city, we're gonna say Finley. Again, it's depending on where you're at. State, we're doing Ohio. There are others listed because we do have scholarships in other states. County, again, we're gonna go with Hancock County. We're graduating from high school in 2021. Now, the school that you're attending, you just need, we've got all of these schools that have scholars, specific scholarships, okay? So you're just going to look at the drop down and determine what school do you go to? Um, I am going to say that I go to Van Buren and I reside in Van Buren. Now you might be in Finley um, and open enroll, that's fine, um, but make sure that you put the appropriate information there. High school GPA, we're gonna say I have a three, four. Now these next questions are asterisked, they are required. I'm gonna answer yes to all of them so that you can see how it filters to other, other questions later on that are related to that. Um, so I'm gonna say yes to high school athletics, yes to extracurriculars and clubs, Yes, I took some college courses. 
um, like CCP classes, maybe through Rhodes State College or Bowling Green, University of Finley, that sort of thing. Uh, test scores. Not all universities and colleges are requiring your ACT or SAT this year for the class of 2020. 2021 due to COVID. So we are not requiring this as an answer. If you have taken the test and you want to share your test score, that's great. You don't have to. Church activities, yes. Volunteering and community service, yes. Down here, what awards or honors have you received in high school? Uh, were you student of the month? Maybe. Um, a, B, honor roll. Um, math student of the year, okay? Anything that you have received awards for or honors for um, in high school, put that in here and what years of school you received that. If you forget, um, if you aren't sure about maybe something that your freshman year, go back and check with mom and dad because they're always really proud about that stuff. And so they remember, they probably have a certificate or an award somewhere um, in, a, in a nice little box for you. So check with them, but list any awards or honors that you've received. Again, as much information as you can put in here is great because this is what the selection committees will be looking at. Now this question, I marked yes to extracurriculars. So that's why this question is here. If you weren't involved in clubs or extracurriculars, and you marked no, you're not gonna see this question. It all depends on how you answer. So I'm gonna say that I was involved in National Honor Society and that I was a tutor, okay? Now, this is where you put all that information. What extracurricular activities were you involved in? Were you involved in student council? Um, did you um, work with, um, were you on the bowling team or the chess club or anything like that? What were you involved in? What years of high school? How many hours or how many um, how many hours a week or a month were you involved in that? Again, that might be just be an estimate. You may not have kept track, but put any of that information right in this box. Share, share, share the information with the reviewers. Now, high school sports. That's because I answered yes to the athletics question. If I answered no, none of these questions will be there. So again, it depends on how you answer the question. So I'm gonna say that I played golf and track. Years of sports, I did it all four years of high school. And yes, I played some varsity sports. And here I'm gonna give details. I'm gonna say um, I was on the golf team for four years and I qualified for Finley Area Golf Association Championship. Um, two of those years. I was captain of the track team. I went to state in pole vault, whatever your involvement with sports is, put that information all in here. Let the reviewers know your accomplishments. You've earned it. Now, varsity sports, because I answered yes, I played varsity sports, there's more questions. If I said no, I didn't play varsity sports, I only did JV, that's fine. I won't have these questions. How many did I play? I played, um, Three, I don't remember what I said. Um, how many years did I play varsity sports? Because that says varsity sports. I played three years of varsity. And yes, I participated prior to my senior year. And it was track and other because golf is not there. How many varsity letters did I earn? I learned I earned three, we'll say. Yes, I earned it in either my junior or senior year. I said earlier I played golf, so now here's this golf question. If you didn't play golf and you didn't mark golf, this will not be on your application. But I said yes, so yes, I played golf two years. Yes, I qualified for that golf association championship. You will see why later on. So volunteer and community service, this is where you're gonna put, did you um, teach vacation Bible school at church? Did you um, every fall rake leaves for an uh, older couple in your neighborhood? Um, did you serve food at city mission? Collect coats for Christmas, that sort of thing. You're gonna put that here. Did you have any leadership roles? How many years of school did you do that? Again, share any of your accomplish accomplishments with the selection committees. That's what I did, they'll be so impressed. College, this is where you're gonna put where you plan to attend. Now, it's a drop down. We have five that are very specific 
um, scholarships for specific universities. So if you're going to one of these five, you're gonna to wanna to show that on here. That's why those are drop downs. If you're not going to one of those five, click on other. I said I was going to Toledo, so I would click on other. I'm hoping to graduate from college in 2025. The next upcoming school year in the fall, undergrad freshman. Now, this is where you're gonna put what, what kind of schooling? Are you going to a trade school, vocational school? We have scholarships for that. Two-year school, we have scholarships for that. Four-year school, scholarships for that. So I'm saying a four-year, I'm going to get a bachelor's degree, and I am going to go into other math science field. If you're undecided, put undecided. If what you're going into is not listed, click other. Okay, you don't have to have um, have an exact knowledge of what you're gonna do right now. Other major info, if there's something else you want us to know about your major, put that here. Minor, it's required. Most people really don't at this point know what you might minor in. So I'm gonna put undecided. Again, I can put information there. I have been accepted, yes. Yes, it's outside of Hancock County. And yes, I will be a full-time student. This is where if you've not chosen a specific school, um, this is where you can list your top three. So maybe one of those schools that was in the drop down is in your top three, but you haven't decided exactly where you're going to go. If you have one of those three listed here, that allows me to come back to you later before I send it to the selection committee. Say, hey, have you decided? Are you going to the University of Finley? Because you might qualify for the scholarship. So um, list whatever it is you have. I'm again going to put just one for time's sake. Now transcript. This is where you're going to put your high school guidance counselor's email address. You're gonna to need to know their, kind, their email address. You're gonna type it in that spot. Then you will see, I have created a template for you. You can use my template. You don't have to use the template. You can put your own email in this, but this gives my contact information and the due date um, for the guidance counselor to know. So I'm copying and pasting. You come over here, compose email. Click compose email, paste it into the body. Now make sure that you sign it so they know who it's coming from. Make sure you put their name, um, dear counselor, put their specific name. Subject line, transcript. Once you know that this is exactly the way you want it to be, that you are sending it to the right person, you've got the subject line in there, um, you've got your name in there so that they know what they're, you're requesting of them, then you can hit send. Then right here underneath it, it shows that it was sent. Now you're done. It's all in the hands of your guidance counselor, okay? They do this every year. They do a lot of them, so they are very swamped. They're doing it for your college applications and your scholarship applications. Be patient with them. Most uh, guidance counselors will wait until the end of the first semester to submit your transcript so that the selection committees have the most accurate and up-to-date information. Um, so once you have sent that and it shows it's sent, there's nothing more you need to do about your transcript. Your guidance counselor will handle the rest of it. Okay, you can still submit your application when you're done. It will not be held up because we're waiting on your counselor. Down here, you're going to need to um, put in an essay. Let the, let the selection committee know, why do you feel you deserve the, any scholarships? Or um, what are some of your goals? What, what are plans for your future? What do you feel that the selection committees should know about you? So you're gonna put in this essay and then you continue. Now this is specific requirements. I'm gonna mark a lot of things on here and then you'll see later why I did it that way. Um, there's lots of different specific requirements in this slot. If they apply to you, check mark them. If none of them apply to you, you're gonna click on none of these apply to me. This is required so you do have to check something, okay? But I'm gonna just check mark a lot of things here so that I can show it to you later on um, as we get closer to the end. Okay, 
Now, next section, letter of recommendation. This is almost exactly like the transcript, except it's a letter of recommendation. You need to choose someone that you feel would write you a great letter of recommendation, a teacher, a coach, an employer, um, a coworker, a close family friend, a neighbor, somebody that you have worked for, somebody that can um, you know, write a letter of recommendation about your quality of character, your integrity, um, the kind of person you are, your work ethic, that sort of thing. What you're going to do here is you're going to put that person's email address in this slot. It cannot be a family member and probably don't ask your guidance counselor because they've already got a lot on their plate. Um, so maybe it's um, okay. Who knows, I'm making things up. So again, I have a template here for you that is specific about what it is that you're asking this person to do for you. It's got the deadline, my contact information. You're gonna do the same thing, compose email. Click on that, paste it into the body, sign it. Again, you can be typing your own in here if you want. It does not have to be um, what I have put. Subject, letter recommendation. And then you're going to do the same thing. Once you've got it all ready, hit send. It shows that it's sent. So again, now it's off to that person. This person and your guidance counselor are going to get two emails, one from you requesting and one from me with a link that they can go to that then they upload their letter recommendation or the transcript direct, I'm sorry, directly to that. And then it's um, part of your application file. So again, once you send that off, you're done. You don't have to worry about that. It's all going to be up to your recommender and your guidance counselor. Now, work experience. This is any jobs you've had in high school, whether it's been raking leaves, whether it's been mowing a yard, whether it's working at Archie's or the bowling alley or the movie theater or whatever. Put your work experience, how long you were there, what sorts of things you did. Again, as much information as you want to give the selection committees. Are you currently employed? Now pay attention to this. When I click yes, you're gonna see another question pop up. This is to share that information. If I clicked no, I wouldn't have this question here. It's only because I marked yes. So I'm gonna say I worked at Fear Barrel. I work part-time, maybe 15 hours a week, okay? So then you're going to click on I agree saying, all of the information that you have provided here um, is accurate and true to the best of your knowledge. You're going to type in your name. Now, you can abandon request. That means everything you've just done is lost. You'll have to start over completely. Don't hit that. Or you can hit save application. Anytime you hit save application, it's going to save wherever you're at. Maybe you only got partway through the application and it was time for you to go to work and you had to stop, or you didn't have email addresses, or there was some sort of information you needed to get from your parents. You can stop at any time, click on save application, and it will save anything you've already done. And you can come back and log on later and pick up where you left off. You can do this as many times throughout the process as you need to, clicking save application and everything will be there. I think I'm done, so I'm gonna click on submit application. What is happening now is in the background, it's taking all of your answers and it is matching you to any of our scholarships that you meet the criteria for. Doesn't mean these are the ones you'll definitely get. What we do is I send all of those applications to selection committees and in March and April, they start looking at those to determine who's awarded and then in May, we start awarding those scholarships. But what just happened was it matched my answers to any scholarships. So if you remember, I said I play golf. There are several golf scholarships. I'm eligible for those. I said my parent worked at Cooper. Here's a Cooper one that I'm eligible for. Um, earlier, I said that I, I marked in those special requirements that I was a foster child. That's related to this. It gives you a little description of the scholarship and the donor, but it's gonna show you everything that you qualify for. So that one application, you can see all of these based on how I answered, all of these scholarships that I am now eligible for. I've met the criteria. At the bottom, it's gonna tell you, okay, these, there's something more you have to do. 
You can again stop here, save application, you're done, come back to it. I'm gonna continue just so that you can see what the next step would be. So I click the blue continue button. And here you go, they're all listed here. This one is already submitted. There's nothing more you have to do for that scholarship, okay? Um, we're going to say that I, this is the, the Bobby Burrell Golf Scholarship. I played golf. This tells me what, I, what else I have to do. I need another letter of recommendation for this. Actually, all of these, you're gonna need another letter of recommendation. Use one more person, just one more person. So it's gonna be just like you did it in the application. You're gonna put that person's email address in there. You are going to either type in your own or copy paste. You're gonna compose, put it in there, letter of recommendation, again, sign it, put their name, all that, click send, and it's gonna send it off to that person. That one person then can do a letter of recommendation for all of these others that you qualify for, okay? So in this case, I've done that. There's nothing more I need to do. It says that it was sent. I'm going to submit application. So now you see that it changed from draft to submitted up here. I'm done with that one. I've done everything I have to do. So now it's gone to the next one and it shows that this is the Cooper one. I need a recommendation. Same person you just did it for, put their name in there. Okay, you see that it's in there. So the next thing is, oh, Cooper requires a, an essay for this one. Okay, I'll do the essay, okay? So I create this essay, I submit. Now it shows that submitted. So each time you do a submit, you have finished it up, it's gonna let you know what you still need to do. As long as it says draft, you still need to finish something with that. Now, I know this is a lot of information. Um, again, you do not have to do everything in all, all in one sitting, it's a lot. Um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, your guidance counselors have my email address. They can reach out to me. They can give that to you. On our website is our phone number down here. I am working on a hybrid work model, um, like a lot of you are as well. So I'm not always in the office, but even if you call and leave a voicemail, it goes directly to my emails. So even if I'm working from home, I will get that. Um, up here in the About Us, our staff, it gives, um, here's information, you can click on this and it'll, you can email me, um, reach out if you've got any questions, um, any concerns, something seems like it's not working quite right, or you just want me to verify something on my end, please reach out, okay? Um, I wish you the best of luck in the rest of your senior year. Um, I hope that you guys are able to finally get back together, all of you in the same building, in the same classrooms, and can have some, some normalcy at the end of your senior year. And I wish all of you the best of luck as you continue to pursue your academics um, at the next level. So um, have a great day and go class of 2021.